previously on Crit Fail Club. Lady Faustus, out of earshot from your friends, the Duke leans down uh, toward you and he says, You know, I know you're not the real Lady Faustus. Did you think I wouldn't recognize a halfling in a cheap dress? Nyla takes a defended step backwards. You don't care about my son. You're like me. You know what matters and you know what doesn't matter. Take my gold and get out of Baldur's Gate and we will never speak of this again. Nyla comes back to you all and she looks very concerned. <laughs> okay, we gotta come up with a big game plan. We gotta come up with one quick. From somewhere in this labyrinth of hallways, you can hear the sound of uh, shouting. You can hear Salvador screaming. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna run over there and I'm gonna try to pick the lock. I know you prefer men, but that's not the deal I made. You need to sire a child. Our options are limited, sweetheart. It looks like uh, Salvador has uh, managed to cast Magic Circle, uh, the spell around him, in the corner of the room. Standing right at the edge of this Magic Circle is probably the most ravishingly beautiful woman either of you have ever seen. Uh, and the moment you burst in, she turns around, she's like, ah, rude. Nyla steps forward and she puts herself between uh, Sal and whatever this thing is. She puts out her hand like it's going to be kissed. Make a constitution oh, save for me, Nyla. Uh, she ducks her head and kisses your knuckle lightly. And you have taken 32 points of damage. Oh god! Jeez. I collapse on the floor. Make a wisdom saving throw. Oh. That's not good enough. You are charmed, Ariazis. Would you mind killing your friend for me? Okay. Uh, All right. Yep. So there's there's a bear. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, please, I'm so scared. Uh, he's gonna cast, I guess, guiding bolt at level three. Oh, that's just enough to kill it. Yes. Yay! Oh, <laughs> yes so. You haul ass uh, out of the <laughs> castle. You know, you make a couple left turns uh, down alleyways. We gotta get out of Baldur's Gate now. We are gonna be in a lot of trouble. Uh, what are you gonna do with the gold? Uh, Nyla's gonna try to stash it in her apartment. Salvador looks up at you, Nyla, with betrayal all over his face. Oh, I'm so glad you managed to get your gold, Nyla. Was it worth it? I go to my crappy apartment and I, I like have floorboards that I hide it under. I want a genuine assessment. Like, if she wanted to, she could just leave. She stops at the, the doorway and looks back. And there's a moment where she's just can't decide. She looks at back at the gold and she closes the door and goes to meet everybody else. You head north out of Baldur's Gate. You know I didn't mean, I mean, I, I, the plan was never for that to happen. So maybe you should tell him. I'm so I am, I am sorry, sorry. I feel like there's some RP that Ariazi's and uh, so we have to do. Hey, how's it going? Not brilliantly. Who expects succubus is right? Am I right? I did, like, almost kill you. I'm so glad that Sal managed to kill her, though. This is the time when I would say I love you, but like in a language that Ariazis doesn't speak. I, I love you. I regret what I did. I mean, you already said you were sorry. I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm not convinced you understand why I was so upset. Now that I wasn't upset with you because you brought me back home. I was upset with you because it seemed like you refused to shoulder any blame for it. Especially when you went in there explicitly trying to get money. I know, Sal, that's what, that's what I do. But you're so much more than that, Nyla! And he, dro he drops down to his knees and he hugs you. Ah! There is so much goodness inside of you! I just want you to be the best version of yourself you can possibly be, Nyla! She's hiding it from Sal, but there's like tears in Nyla's eyes. You continue following the long road. You follow the road toward the wood. It's this beautiful uh, white castle. Standing in the doorway is probably the most beautiful human man either of you have ever seen. What, is it someone's birthday? We're looking for Mordenkainen. Um, my Mordenkainen? Thing, uh... You can tell immediately that this is the house of a noble family. By the way, my name is Esther. Nice to meet you. I mean, Russia if it... might be well, around. I don't. They know. might be coming right around inside, like after been hunting or something, stomping snow off the um, off their boots and things. Asher's like, I swear to God, if you let it bleed all over the floor again, I'm gonna throw you out a window. Ember comes in with a giant basket of root vegetables, and he's like. Oh man, mom's gonna be so happy. What the hell? Baku and Mordenkaiden are like <laughs> coming out, like down the stairs. Elmins dimension that I would be receiving visitors. There's something about uh, a prime material plane. We're looking for an artifact about the world pillars. No, uh, the, the, the shadow fell. There's a horrible, horrible blood prophecy. A, yes, I do know where an obvious intersection of the prime material plane and the shadow fell is. B, 
I am absolutely not going there ever again, anywhere, ever, ever. C, it is also guarded by Mordenkind and says, if you are intending to get past a Nightwalker, you will need all the help that you can get. to the part that I'm sure you're all just desperate to, to get to, <laughs> where you fight a Nightwalker CR20. Oh, yeah. I'm Jesus. so excited. <laughs> I'm sure you're all so excited. Uh, but before... sorry, are we doing that this session? Oh, God, no. Um, unless you take a really long time with RP, yeah. That's what we'll be doing tonight, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to the RP session where we do nothing but RP. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's set the scene. Um, you have all... Uh, Mordenkainen has just given you this ominous warning, like, if you if you want to take down the Nightwalker, you're going to need all the help you can get. Uh, and then, like, that sentence hangs in the air. And then Escher's kind of like, well, I'll let the servants know we have company for dinner. <laughs> what about Sassy? Like, are we still just holding parts of... Yeah, both? Sassy's just in pieces. Uh, it's fine. Oh, Sassy's floor. been bundled up into, into the cloak. Okay, <laughs> I already right. took care of that. I mentioned it last time. Okay. Yeah, um... Uh, a bag of sassy is in Selwyn's inventory. <laughs> Great. I gotta add that. <laughs> uh, Escher stands up and he summons a servant and uh, to let them know we've got, you know, some company for dinner. Uh, I guess Nyla will step forward. Cause she's still feeling slightly guilty about Sal. Uh, <laughs> so she's going to step forward and look at Escher and say, uh, you seem like a well-connected uh, person. So- um, I literally only have one connection and it's my husband, but go off, I guess. <laughs> well thank you i was going to anyway uh, <laughs> so we we may have left a small uh how do i put this delicately trash fire in Baldur's gate <laughs> ariazis is like adds his father is an asshole and uh we were just wondering you know if you had any you know at, maybe not you specifically but your husband had connections in Baldur's gate you could just maybe inquire delicately and see what's still going on uh, he looks at you, he looks over at Salvador, he says, I mean, don't get me wrong, I am the biggest gossip on the Sword Coast, but I'm gonna need a little <laughs> more than that. Like <laughs> he, he, like, he, he primps his hair, he's like, yeah, I know. It's a reputation I've built up over many weeks. That's, I figured you'd be the person to go to. Uh, and if they don't well, answer see- me, then I can forge my husband's signature, so... Is Ember, is Ember in the room? Yep. Escher has no shame no shame in admitting this. Ember looks at him and is just like, you shouldn't say that in front of me. You know it upsets me. <laughs> he says, it's fine. There's no problem. No one will ever know. I will. I will. Okay. All of I'm us gonna, will. I'm going to go wash some rutabagas. <laughs> um, so Nyla looks at Sal and she goes, well, Sal. Are, is, are you are you okay with me asking this? I guess that's the first question. <laughs> uh, Sal looks a little hesitant. He says, I mean, on the one hand, it is my personal business, and it's also kind of horrifying and embarrassing to talk about. But on the other hand, you know, I am kind of curious as to why my father, who for most of my life has been fine, um, <laughs> suddenly forced me into a a betrothal with a woman and a demon and then left me in a room alone with her to you know Escher's like he he did what like <laughs> right Ariazi's like sitting down already like all right all right everyone grab some tea <laughs> <laughs> Nyla looks back at uh and Escher and is like so is that enough information for you Escher's like I mean, yes and no. I mean, I definitely want to b- learn more information. He's like, luckily for you, I have the family signet ring. So, uh, yes, I have absolutely no problem sending off a couple letters. From the kitchen. I didn't give it to you for evil! <laughs> <laughs> and sure just, like, com- like, like just continue speaking as if he didn't even hear Ember. <laughs> it's like, I'll, you know, I'll, I have a couple connections in Baldur's Gate, and yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can do. I mean, it might be hard to get back to you with what I learned, since you'll be in another plane of reality, 
Uh, but how about, you know, once you come back, uh, you just uh, stop by the Tremaine Estate again, and uh, I'll let you know what I got. Sounds good. Sal, how you feeling? Uh, Sal clearly isn't <laughs> feeling great. Like, he, he does want answers uh, because, you know... This was this was a horrible traumatic event, and you know it's important that he understands why it happened. But also, he's like not crazy about the idea of this very powerful and also very attractive person knowing all his business. <laughs> but and now it's Ariazi's turn to be gossipy. Like, so are you going to? Who wants to talk about their ideal type? <laughs> So I was like, uh, he, he looks nervously between Ariazis and Asher, like, uh, it's like sweats and gay. <laughs> so then she turns to like, Asher, like, so how did you meet your husband? Tell me everything. Oh, uh, he rescued me from my vampire lord rapist. Oh, that sounds yeah. pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah, it sucked. I spent 50 years as a vampire. Ha, ha, ha. It's, it's, it's not important. Okay. Not important. Mm, yeah, okay. So you're not a vampire now. No, I'm definitely not a vampire now. No. Hmm. Interesting. I have a pulse and everything. Very, very good to know. He has a pulse, Sal. That is a great place to start for liking a man. <laughs> Sal is still sweating and gay. I have no idea because I've never liked a man, but <laughs> I feel like a pulse is a good place to start. <laughs> What brought that on? And she's like, yeah, what brought that on? Do you want to tell us your ideal type? Because, you know, actually, <laughs> it's like, Baku's mom, actually. You should probably meet her. And I mentioned Baku in the back, like, no, <laughs> stop it. Yeah, Baku's like, D -d 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 no, 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 please, no, no. <laughs> I am already like, so uncomfortable. So there are so many people I don't know. <laughs> so, Moran, if you like ladies, let me tell you about Moran. Giant emerald dragon, and her human form ain't too shabby either. Ariazis is like got her elbows on the table, like leaning forward, like mm -hmm, tell me. He's like, you know what? Let's just go this way. Let's just go see if she's inside. And he like walks Ariazis out just because he wants to see what happens because he can't leave well enough alone. He's Escher. Right. <laughs> Ariazis definitely follows him, and Baku's just like, don't wait, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. This is cool. This is fine. Uh, so now the room is mostly just is Selwyn and Mordenkainen, and there's also Salvador, who's trying to calm his gay down. Uh, <laughs> and as, as you look uh, toward Mordenkainen again, you see he has a cup of tea, which he is cutting with something from a flask uh, <laughs> under his robe. And like the moment they walk out, he takes like a long swig of his spiked <laughs> tea. I, I just give him a nod like, I understand that. Uh, Mordenkainen's like, try living with them. <laughs> Nyla looks at Sal and she goes, I think uh, maybe maybe you and I, Sal, should take a walk and uh, leave these two. But I guess you do magic too. I guess I also do magic. Anyways, let's just leave these two alone. <laughs> Sal uh, does not understand what the hell you're talking about, but he's like, all right. <laughs> yeah, it, but, mm. It's too late. Nyla has grabbed Sal by the wrist and yeah, right. him out. <laughs> like, oh magic user to magic user. You are left alone in the room with Mordenkainen, who is still finishing off whatever he whatever his he spiked his tea with. Could I have a bit of that? <laughs> that I offer my teacup over. <laughs> Mordenkainen eyes you for a minute. It's like I don't know. You're kind of skinny. I don't know if you can hold your liquor. Uh, but eventually, he agrees and he like he cuts your tea uh, with a little bit of whatever it is. It's pretty. It's pretty powerful. Um. So. We, uh, I don't know if, um, if, uh, Elminster mentioned it, but Sal is under a modified memory spell. Mm. He takes, he finishes off his sip of tea. The spell modify memory? I, I think so. I think that's what he said. He says, all right. Is, I don't know, like, I, I, we want to help him out with it, but we don't know where to start. We we're kind of hoping that maybe you knew something. That could help us. He says, uh, well, getting rid of um, Modify Memory, it's uh, it's as easy as a dispel magic, although it does depend upon uh, the, the strength of the spell in question. Um, he says, if I have a look at, your, at your friend and get an idea of the strength of the spell, I can certainly give you the options. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that, that would be good. He says, is, um, is there a tearing hurry for it? Or... Uh, I just, I don't know. With um, everything that's going on with you, you, you heard about the succubus. So I, 
I don't know. It's clearly it's something that's been arranged for a while now. And I just, I wonder if that's part of what happened with the memory spell. He says, mm, it's possible. Um, depending on how strong the spell in question is, it could have modified memories from as, as, as soon as a month ago or up to his entire life. It depends. Uh, mm. And he says, well, you know, I, I can have a look at it. It's uh, Dispel magic isn't a particularly complicated spell. Um, and it sounds like you're going to be staying the night for dinner and we'll be leaving in the morning. So I'll, when, whenever I see him next, I'll certainly have a look. We'd really appreciate that. I like to imagine that after he says, like, okay, yeah, but next time I see Salvador, I'll take a look at it. And Selwyn's like, okay, and she keeps staring at him. <laughs> like, big eyes, like, mm -hmm. like, yes, can I help you? Like, come on, work up the nerve, work up the nerve, takes a giant sip of tea. Mordenkainen is getting a little nervous <laughs> the longer he's staring at him. I'm sorry, it's just, you're, you're such a famous wizard and you must know such great spells and, like, it's killing me. Well, Morton kind of uh, stares at you in confusion for a moment, and then he kind of laughs, and he's like, I mean, all right. He does not know how to handle hero worship. It is a very new experience for him. <laughs> I have a fan? What? <laughs> he says, I'm not going to give you an autograph if that's what you're asking. Um, no. 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 <laughs> and then in the back of her head, someone's like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, um... I just, I, you know what it's like. You're always looking for new spells and things, and I just, I can't imagine what kinds of things you might have learned over over your years. Mordenkainen looks a little anxiously. He has a um, his spell book is mounted uh, to his belt with a chain through the spine, um, and he seems a little nervous. And you, it's a it's a it's an anxiety that you understand, Selwyn. Like you wouldn't trust your best friend with your spell book. You wouldn't trust Ariazis with your spellbook. Like, uh -huh. it, as the spellbook is, like, the most important thing that a wizard has on them. Uh, and the idea of, you know, hey, can I look into your spellbook is sort of like, hey, can I rip open your chest cavity and stare into your still-beating heart? Like, it's <laughs> it's a big ask of any wizard. Uh, but you can tell that instinct is also warring with his, you know, like, you know, knowledge is power and, you know, gotta help a fledgling wizard out. Uh, so he looks kind of nervously between the spellbook mouth on his hip and you, and he seems to like weigh the options in his head. He's like, yeah, "All right, fine, not not here though. You know, it's servants coming and going everywhere. I don't want anyone spilling anything on it." Oh yeah, no, 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 no. I totally get it. I totally get that. He it he stands up and kind of straightens out his robe. I I don't know. I've never actually directly copied from somebody's book before, but like, if you have like. A secondary copy that's not like your main copy i could copy off of that i guess he says i do not have a secondary copy of my spell book so wayne in her head is kind of like okay that's bad planning but i yeah i'm who am i the judge i don't really either <laughs> uh he uh heads up uh the flight of stairs in the main entryway uh, and he heads into a small um it's a much smaller sitting room uh you know there's like a, a small table, a couple uh, love seats, a couch with a big bay window overlooking the forest. Uh, and he says, all right, be, try to be careful with it. Don't spill any ink on it or anything. Promise, 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 promise. Uh, he clips the, uh, the, the, the big chain off it and uh, he sets it down on the table and he kind of gestures like, well, have at it. Uh, so this spell book, <laughs> this spell book is big. It is old. Um, it like it is very old like just like the condition of the book it's obviously been very well tended to like it's a spell book he's tried to keep it in good shape but it's clearly at least over 150 years old like it is ancient and like the further you flip back in the spell book the more obscure and difficult the spells become he has written down some of the most powerful and memorable spells he's written down uh, the spell time stop uh, which is oh a God. very powerful Boy. spell uh, he's written down spells like um, Meteor Storm, uh, and he also has written down Wish. <laughs> Yike. You would not be able to copy it down because you do not have any right. ninth oh. level spell slots, but... Uh, no. He, but you've heard of Wish, and yeah, it's it's pretty... It's, 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 like, it's, what it's, the hell did he allow me to do this for? <laughs> Yeah, and he, he is, you can tell he's, he's hovering kind of nervously on the side of the room, just making sure you don't do anything uh, no, too bad. No, that's totally to valid. It. Yeah. 
that is totally valid. I obsessively like wipe off my hands on my uh, very clean leggings and okay. uh, just carefully, carefully open the book. Uh, so yeah, we discussed it for the uh, for the listeners at home. Uh, we discussed in advance which spells he had in his spellbook and which ones that Selwyn could copy down and how much time it takes. Uh, for the spells and uh, you wanted to copy uh, oh, there it is uh, shatter magic missile and comprehend languages uh, all of which Mordenkainen certainly has in his spell book and all of which would be useful they're all very good spells mm-hmm. yep 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 uh, so in the process of copying them all down it takes a long time um, I imagine before dinner starts you could probably maybe finish one um, yeah that's fair and mordenkainen doesn't want to like leave you alone with his spell book no. No, <laughs> i get that uh and uh is there any small talk that goes on uh in between you know copying certain letters and symbols or i think selwyn is a little bit too like oh dear god and also like oh my god this is just <laughs> enrapturing like massive nerd <laughs> um i she kind of like forgets he's there a little bit until she like feels the his glare on the back of her neck and like, it's like oh right like don't fuss with that page <laughs> <laughs> right 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 okay carefully back hands off just look um he so he uh, he's occupying himself because it takes a long time to copy spells and everything uh, he's occupying himself with um there's a small bookshelf um in the sitting room which he flips to every now and then um one of the other, uh, someone else, it's usually like Escher or Moran or Baku, someone will come in and they'll just have a brief conversation and um, and it's like, oh yeah, dinner's in an hour or whatever. Mm. (laughs) Um, And as, um, after, let's just say it's, uh, the last person that he talks to is like Ember or someone. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, Ember leaves and Mordenkainen just watches him leave and he says, you know, you clearly have some admiration for me. I don't hold that against you, but you really do have it backwards. What? He looks over from his tea. He says, "Oh, your uh, your little hero worship thing for me." Don't get me wrong; it's 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 cute and it's understandable. You know, one wizard to another, but it's. He says, "Well, you d- you don't know where it is you're walking. You don't know what happened in this house in this in this land. You you don't have any concept of what it is these people that you've met have done." Nobody's volunteered the information either i suppose they would prefer it that way he says they saved everything the world the planar system they did it for no glory no riches no accolade no other reason than it was the right thing to do and they were the only ones who could do it i've seen them fight gods and win and so too have i seen gods bow their heads in deference toward them that kind of gets her full attention. She carefully sets the pen aside. What? He says, it's quite a long story, and I don't imagine I would have the time to tell it all. He says, I don't hold your admiration for me against you, but it's not me who is the most impressive person on this estate. You don't yet know how lucky you are that you've managed to get the help of just one of these people, but I think you will be. We do appreciate it. My admiration for you isn't just as a wizard it's for everything that you've done for other wizards he, for he he gestures his hand vaguely he's like he's like just stop <laughs> magic <laughs> like the magic in and of itself all of that study it's what good what good all this knowledge would do if if the universe had ended three months ago it was that bad oh yes it was very bad he says anyway if you're finished up with that first level, it was probably almost dinner time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I just carefully, you know, put everything away and make sure that nothing is anywhere near anything. I let him take his book back. I put mine away. <laughs> he says, I'll let you finish up the others overnight. Thank you. Thank uh, you. And he heads down uh, for dinner. So Ember's going to want to catch Mordenkainen alone after dinner. Okay. Uh, Mordenkainen uh, is, has just um, finished up his dinner. You know, the servants are clearing the table. And he's like sighing. He's like, I have to give up my spell book again for another like, six <laughs> hours. <laughs> A rip. What, to the, the tweety little 
goth yeah. one. It's like it's a it's a wizard thing. We we learn spells by copying them down, and I don't know. She just gave me this really big eyed look, and it's hard to say no. Yeah, she does have big eyes. Yeah, I don't know. Did. I was like, I just always said, just get your spells from your god. It's so much easier. Well, we're not all so lucky, Lord Tremaine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can say that again. Hey, listen. If uh, do you have a second after dinner? Just want to yeah. talk in private. Yeah, sure. He he uh, he get he gestures this all way like, hang on. Uh, and he mm -hmm. uh pulls you. He lets you pull him aside. Uh, probably down the hallway or something. Yeah. So he pulls him away, and I from the course of this conversation, I want to be away from Escher. <laughs> Okay. Oh God. Oh, um, that's that's that bodes well. Um, that's right, always a good right. precedent to set. Uh, he looks at or Ember looks at uh, Mordenkainen and he goes, "Look, I've been recalling it's all been coming back to me uh, how dangerous Nightwalkers can be, and I I need to ask you a favor." He looks at you skeptically. Yes. If I don't come back, Escher's gonna do something stupid, he says... and I need you to stop him. <laughs> he says, "Um." I'm sorry, what sort of stupid thing did you have in mind? Oh, you know, there's countless, honestly, with Escher. You can never really keep it in, you know, there's no way of predicting. He says, but it's something. If I could... Do, it's magic. It'll be something stupid with magic. I guarantee that. He says, Lord Tremaine, listen, if I could stop your husband from doing anything, my life would have been a lot easier. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm going to make the same request of Baku, Baku and Vasha, but I just... I just know he won't take it well, and there's a risk, there's a big risk, that it's, something's gonna happen. And I just, I need to know that he's gonna be okay. I need to know that he's not going to go back to the temple in Barovia and make some other stupid request and get himself killed. I just, I can't go to my death knowing that that would happen. He says, listen, it would just be easier for me to come with you than to pretend I have any power to control Escher. <laughs> You might be right. <laughs> that might... He says, listen, yeah. I have stared gods in the face, but I do not fear them as much as I fear the wrath of your husband. He is very terrible. You're not wrong. <laughs> so Ember, Ember steps forward and he like clasps his uh, Mordenkainen shoulder and he goes, it would mean a great deal if you could join us. Your, your powers are well known and your, like, your knowledge uh, would be much appreciated. Flattery will get you nowhere, Tremaine. It usually gets me lots of play. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, for the terror of my husband, will you please come? <laughs> because if you're not there, if you die with me, then you won't have to deal with him being insane. And you and I both know that he's no fun to deal with. Um, I guess he can roll persuasion with advantage because he really does not want <laughs> to keep this weird ominous promise. You're joking me. Okay, 18. Oh. Uh, 18 is good enough. Um, Morton kind of is like, fine, I'll take you as far as the Nightwalker, but I will not go back to the Shadowfell. I want that absolutely known. Not going back to the Shadowfell. Not going back to Shadowfell. Writing it down right now. <laughs> Ember pretends to write something down on his hand. <laughs> Morton kind of is like, I have to go. <laughs> and then he like leaves him. Leaves like, him like I'm imagining Ember with this invisible, like using his finger as a pen. It's <laughs> like, yep. there's no pen. Writing Just it down. <laughs> Taking a note. <laughs> Mental note. <laughs> hey, Escher says suddenly, jerking Salvador out of his nighttime prayers. Salvador spins around in surprise, which is tempered with embarrassment when he sees who it is. After all, Salvador is in just a simple nightshirt, and Escher is still too gorgeous for him to handle properly. Oh, he begins stammering. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, I just... Escher, for his part, doesn't even seem to notice Salvador's embarrassment. He lets himself into the guest room and shuts the door behind him. I have some stuff to give you. Salvador's nervousness, if anything, only intensifies as Escher closes the distance between them. You... you do? From beneath his robes, Escher produces a small brown leather bag, which he hands to Salvador, who in his confusion takes it in both hands. When he pulls it open and looks inside, he starts. I can't accept this, he says at once, looking back up at him. This isn't a gift. This is an insurance policy, Escher says, voice edged with severity. If something happens to Ember, you're going to make sure he makes it home to me. I can't lose him. A look of understanding slowly falls over Salvador's face. He turns back toward the bed and empties the contents onto the sheets. Three shining, well-cut diamonds, fist-sized, and a single spell scroll, bound tightly with twine. 
For Revivifa, Salvador says at once, fingers tracing the edge of one of the diamonds. They're useful for any healer to have. Salvador is sure Escher knows that. He looks from them to the scroll. But what's... Escher grabs his wrist before he can pull it open to inspect the contents, a gesture which makes Salvador jump in surprise and turn to face him. It's a spell for the scroll wish, Escher says, grim. Salvador's eyes widen. Wish? He can barely believe it. How do you have this? I made it, Escher answers, which is only somewhat terrifying to hear. If Escher is capable of casting wish, that would make him an extraordinarily competent spellcaster. This is... Salvador almost doesn't know what to say. Wish is the most powerful spell that exists, he says. I don't know if I'd ever feel comfortable using it. What if it backfires? Make sure it doesn't backfire then, Escher says. Listen, I've read up on Nightwalkers. If something happens to Ember, to any of you, this is going to be the only way to fix it. Nightwalkers devour the souls of those they kill, and only something with a lot of juice will be able to bring them back. Salvador feels a knot of fear in his stomach. The more he's learned about Nightwalkers, the more he's had to confront the fact that he's going to have to fight one, the more nauseous with terror he's become. If there's any sympathy in Escher, it doesn't show on his face. Escher leans in close, very close, and stares intensely and seriously into Salvador's eyes. Do not let my husband die, Escher says, voice dark. He's a competent paladin, don't get me wrong, the strongest I've ever met, and if there's anyone in Faerun who could slay a Nightwalker, it's Ember Tremaine. But he's just as mortal as you are, and if anything happens to him— The intensity on Escher's face breaks, but only for a moment. Salvador's expression softens. I understand, Salvador says. I know true love when I see it. I would do anything for him, Escher says, including hunt you and your entire party down. Salvador laughs nervously. Escher does not. Salvador stops laughing. Use the gifts well, Escher says at last, breaking the tension. By the way, you might not want to tell the little one what that spell is capable of. Uh, morning comes, uh, the next morning, and uh, the I, the general idea was we'll leave sometime tomorrow morning. Uh, but you know, there's breakfast to be had. This is a, this is a noble estate. You mm. all get like private guest bedrooms with you know <laughs> private ensuite bathrooms and like killer views <laughs> out over the Neverwinter Wood. Uh, so of course you will also going to get complimentary breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nyla's Nyla's at breakfast and she's like. Can I live here? <laughs> She's like, absolutely not. Thank you for asking. <laughs> uh, actually, I've got a point of order question for um, Amber. Did Escher share, or sorry, did Ember share any of his information about Nightwalkers with anybody else? Um, in terms of in the group so far. Mm-hmm. I imagine um, he probably wouldn't, not with Escher at least, because he wouldn't yeah. want to spook yeah, him. Yeah, he's not. He doesn't want to scare Escher. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't need. Which, for the record, know. as like as the as the med scene may mentioned, uh, too late. Like Escher is already a little freaked out. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't. He, he doesn't, doesn't know, know that. that yeah. He's so he's he hasn't shared anything yet, and he's probably not going until until we leave. He will. Okay. But... So no, it sounds like pretty much not yet. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. We yeah, do announce ahead. at breakfast that Morden Ken is coming with us. <laughs> Morgan kind of like mm, mm, stabs his eggs <laughs> angrily. I can't believe you talked me into this. This is such bullshit. Baku like looks surprised, like, "Oh, that's a thing that you manage, all right." <laughs> I think Ember gives Baku a pointed look at Escher, like he like looks at him, looks at Escher, and raises his eyebrow. Baku like, mm, yeah, nods. Mm-hmm. They get it. <laughs> nice, makes sense. Uh, Morgan kind of says, "We should probably look at them." Um... What was that thing? What's the thing you wanted me to do? No. Oh. oh, uh, if you look at um Sal and Sal kind of uh, jumps in his seat. Huh? Oh, oh no, yeah. We we asked him to check out the spell to see Oh, yeah. You know how how much of your memory has been modified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Is he going to glow blue again? Morden kind of says, well, "Not to, not likely not, no." No. Okay. <laughs> Morden kind in uh says, um he, Sal is sitting uh across uh, not very far from Mordenkind and so the first spell he is going to cast is a spell identify the spell identify allows him basically to uh, to get the details of exactly what sort of magical effect uh, is placed on is placed on Salvador there's obviously some aura right that Mordenkind is reading hmm 
All right. Um, well, uh, the good news is that uh, it is certainly a regular modify memory spell. Uh, it can certainly be removed uh, with a dispel magic. The bad news uh, is that to guarantee its removal, it would need to be cast at a very high rate of power. Uh, mechanically, what he is saying is that the spell that is affecting Salvador, the modify memory spell, was cast in ninth level. Uh. Uh, so he could cast Dispel Magic at a ninth level, but that would be eating up his ninth level spell slot before they've even faced the Nightwalker. Mm. Yike. He says I could. He could cast it at like a um, like a, at a lower level at its regular level, but then he would have to make a very difficult um, ability check. Mm. Uh, the DC would be nineteen because it is. Um, uh, because it was cast at a ninth level, and his modifier in this case would only be plus five. And um, he's wait. yeah, he's explaining this to you, and he says, and also, there's um, he says, because it was cast at a ninth level, it, or because it was cast so powerfully, uh, it indicates that this spell is affecting not just a small part of his memory. It is affecting. It could theoretically be affecting his entire life, and coming back from dispelling that could reasonably be very difficult emotionally you understand yeah i could see how that might be a problem <laughs> so i just kind of nods and just you know rests a rests a hand on sal like you know just in support sal is he looks kind of he lo like there's a lot going on with sal right now like he <laughs> really does want the modify memory spell but like it's affecting his entire life and he's like wait what do so, you know yeah. what, what kind of creature could could cast you know is this he says, well, Something. I mean, Modify Memory is a, is a standard spell. It can be cast by uh, any competent wizard or bard. The fact that it was cast so powerfully indicates that they are also probably very powerful. I can tell you wasn't, that the school of magic is enchantment. There, wasn't there a wizard with his father when we first went in? He, uh, Salvador says, oh, yeah, that's, the, that's my, my father's vizier. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you know how powerful he is, Sal? The vizier? Yeah. I mean, he's he's a vizier. He's pretty powerful. Yeah, I mean, I don't know him personally. I kind of glance over at Escher. Could you maybe see if you can find anything? The bitch already him? done! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> I was um, like, don't even worry about it. I'm going to get all the tea. Uh. <laughs> Ember rolls his eyes at him. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Escher is on top of it. I guess the question, Sal, is... What do you want to do? I mean, it's your memory. Sal says, I mean, I don't want to, you know, force one of our most valuable assets against this Nightwalker to use up a good chunk of his energy before we even face this horrifying, terrible being from, you know, the Shadowfell. <laughs> Ember, I'm sure it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Escher well... is, like, staring at you across the table, like, eating his eggs slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Escher, Escher had already invited us back. We could... Just do it after, I guess. I know it's awful, but he says no. I understand. I mean, don't. I, I'm also not super keen on the idea of you know finding out what horrors await me. Uh, you know. And I just squeeze his hand again. <laughs> Ember claps him on the back. Great, sounds like a plan. <laughs> Morton kind in says uh, it might be a good time to take this brief interlude between the knowing and the not knowing to brace yourself and so i was like yeah, yeah i'll be fine don't worry about me i'm fine i'm always fine he doesn't seem fine <laughs> he's not it's true he's i'm just not. gonna go ahead and say it he does not seem fine <laughs> he's not good good catch there very intelligent hot take. so smart and, and nyla was trying to whisper it to ariazis but it was too loud <laughs> Like, mm, good job. Now everybody, now all of China has heard it. <laughs> all, of all of Faerun China. All of Faerun knows. <laughs> all of Faerun China. No, it's fine. Well, I was just saying the obvious, okay? It's nothing that we didn't know. Okay, anyway, aren't we going to go fight this demon thing? Uh, yes. Uh, Morden kind of says, listen, there are a couple things you need to know before you leave. Since you are so intent on going into the Shadowfell. He says, um, when you pass through the veil into the Shadowfell, uh, you will feel a wave of, of nausea and disorientation. Uh, and when you come to, 
you will if if this rift is still as it as it was when I went through, uh, you will be standing in front of a massive black fortress. Now listen to me very carefully. Do not go inside the fortress. Whatever you do, turn around and walk away from it. Keep walking until you cannot see it anymore. Understood? No yeah. fortress. Emperor's no fortress. Writing. Mm, yes, nothing. Emperor's don't, pretending don't to write go there. hand. <laughs> Asher says, oh, you're not going with them into the Shadowfell. You're helping them kill the Nightwalker, but you are not going into the Shadowfell. I'm sorry, what? You are not going into the Shadowfell, Ember. I, we've, been, we've been in the Shadowfell so many times at this point. What's yes, one more time? Yes, you will get trapped like we did last time. Do you remember when Lathander made flowers in the Shadowfell? That was a sweet memory. What if it's like that? He slams his hand on the table and he says, Ember, I can't let you go into the Shadowfell again. He steps forward and like takes his hand and he goes... Okay, if it means this, I know it means a lot to you, and I don't. I don't want to lose you either. I promise you, I won't go. He's kind of like taking a couple, like deep, calming breaths. He says, <laughs> "Okay, great. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be right back. You know, I'll be right back." He says, "Of course you will. Because I will resurrect you just to murder you again if you have the audacity to die." <laughs> Ember throws a look at Mordenkainen. <laughs> Ariadne is like starting to understand like the character of Escher, like, oh, I like this one. <laughs> so we was like... just mouthing to herself, Lathander created flowers? <laughs> Ember, Ember looks at, uh, at Escher and is like, that would be a huge waste of resources. If you're just going to bring me back and kill me again, could you just, maybe you could just torture me instead. There's a lot of other things you can do, babe. It's like... He it's says, just, I don't want you to hurt yourself. Let's not find out, shall we? Let's not find out what I might do. Okay, well, I'll just do a real good job and no And you dying. won't go into the Shadowfell. And I won't go into the Shadowfell, you're right. Morton Kynan's like, I was like, I have no patience for this relationship. <laughs> I have no patience for relationships in general. This is too much. <laughs> and he says, all right, so, as I mentioned, don't go into the fortress. Just don't. Just trust me. Just don't go into the fortress. Uh, he says, I do not know specifically uh, where the world pillar might be within the Shadowfell, but uh, your best bet to find information on where it might be uh, is in the city called Evernight. Uh, it is a, uh, a, a dark reflection of Neverwinter. It's full of... He, he pauses and is like, among other things, sages and scholars. If there's not someone there who can help you, there is certainly someone who can point you to someone who can, but... You must be careful. You will be outsiders in Evernight. And if you create too much commotion, I would not wish that fate upon my worst enemy. What What exactly does commotion entail? Oh, you know anything that Nyla does. <laughs> Every time right. you speak. Do not create commotion. I, go, I, I mean, don't... like, don't walk up to succubi and put your hand out, perhaps? That's a oh, good start. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Arias. Is, is it, it's also included on the list, don't insult humans when you're trying to get information from them? Probably, oh, yeah. That's we... also a good a good thing, that not cause a commotion. Don't insult an entire race. Morton Kynan is, like, waiting for you to be done with this. <laughs> he says, <laughs> "What? one more thing. He says, this is probably the most important. The Shadowfell is a dismal, joyless place. The longer you stay within it, the longer it has to sink its claws into you. Emotions like joy, love, empathy, even sadness and anger, they'll all give way to this pervasive, bitter numbness. With everything in you, you must fight this malaise. If it settles too deeply into your heart, you will never be able to get it out. Salador's like, that sounds terrible. Yeah. Is it too and... late to go to the Feywild first? <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> he's like looking at the others. I, I have a feeling the Feywild's not much better, but I mean... <laughs> oh, man. And this is... Okay. I, I also want to make this note out of character. Like, for the first couple sessions within the Shadowfell, I'm not going to... Put, you know, put too much emphasis on it, but the longer you spend in the Shadowfell, I am going to ask you to play your characters a little differently, because th that's a real effect that the Shadowfell has on people. It drains them of strong emotion. This acting component of this is just really, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I know! I know! He says, any questions? So, no How? fortress, no cause and a commotion, and... How do you recommend... Everybody. How do you recommend that we keep happy 
thoughts close? He pauses for a minute and he says, Well, for me, uh, what worked was keeping in mind a goal and also the memory of my loved ones. And he says, as as you all are, he pauses and he's like, friends? <laughs> <laughs> and Salvador's like, yeah, we're friends. We're best friends. <laughs> yeah, that's too much, Sal. Uh, he says, I would recommend keeping each other close. Uh, you will need all the support that you can get from one another. Well, that's great because Nyla loves hugs. Nyla does not love hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Nyla's going to learn to. <laughs> Salvador's like, no. you're going to learn to love hugs, Nyla. I will not, but thank you for asking. <laughs> negativity is only going to increase. Great. Well, I love negativity, so I think I'll actually fit in right at home there. Oh, no. Oh, Morton no. kind of looks very doubtful. He says, any other questions? And this is about, you know, this doesn't necessarily have to be about the effect of the Shadowfell. You can also ask him anything about the Shadowfell. Do anything we, do we know knows. anything about the, the world pillar, like, at all? Like, like what does it look like? Is it an no. actual pillar? You do not know anything about it, no. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Does he know anything about it? He only knows what it's theoretically capable of. Mm. Uh, he does not know what it looks like, the specific magical effects, uh, mm -hmm. where it might be found. Oh, here's a good question we're going to have to ask at some point. What happens when we take it out of the shadow, fell? <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> he says, well, theoretically nothing, as long as the artifacts continue to exist. They shouldn't have too much of a of a negative impact on anything. It's only when one is okay. destroyed that one needs to get concerned. Ah, okay. <laughs> How do like... we get back? Oh, he says. Well, there are many um, places where the uh, where the shadow fell intersects with the uh, the prime material plane, but they're usually uh, disparate and difficult to find. Uh, he says. I happen to know. Uh, that within the city of Evernight, there are sort of uh, dimensional drops uh, throughout the city that will take you directly into Neverwinter if you go through them. He says, uh, they are not frequently used because, <laughs> well, when you get to Evernight, you'll you'll know why. Uh, but they should take you directly into Neverwinter on the Prime Material Plane if you go through them. How, how, how can we recognize them? He says, you'll recognize them, don't worry. They're, They're going to be in the sewers, aren't they? <laughs> They're very difficult not to notice. Sal says, why shouldn't he go inside the fortress? <laughs> <laughs> because he said not to. <laughs> well, I mean, aren't you a little bit curious about why not? I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, I won't go inside. I just want to know why we shouldn't. Uh, mean, Morden kind of says. Curiosity, but yeah. <laughs> Morden kind of sighs and he says, the fortress houses the demi planes of dread. The, um, it's these self-contained pockets of reality uh, used to uh, to imprison powerful old dark entities. Oh. Zelda's like, okay, so don't go into the fortress. Got it. <laughs> Absolutely. One hundred percent. Definitely not. And then Escher across the table and he's like, oh, Barovia was one of the, okay, because the dark power is the ones that and he's like looking at like Baku and like Vash is like, cause the dark powers that gave Strahd is, cause they were, it's one of the demi. Okay, oh, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Uh, so you all um, finish up breakfast, um, and you uh, bid uh, final goodbyes to each other. Any anyone in particular that who would like to say goodbye to any other character? Uh, Escher would like to say goodbye to you, Ember. Uh, the first yeah, he. Just saying. Yeah, he first approaches you. He hands you a little, a little, um, a, a lunch pail uh, tied with a little <laughs> handkerchief. He says, "I made you lunch for the Aww. road," and he, he gives you a big hug and a big kiss. And he says, "I will absolutely not forgive you if you have the audacity to die." <laughs> you know, I come back. I always come back. You fucking better. He gives him like a big kiss, and he's like tearing up a little bit. And he's like, "I, I will come back from the fires of hell for you. You know that. I will claw my way out of whatever." <laughs> Whatever Already tries to have. Down. <laughs> you are <laughs> such a sentimental were. fool, and I am holding you to your promise. He gives him like a big last kiss, and then he like walks away before he breaks down further. Because Sal really... is in the background, like it's so sweet. Ah. <laughs> he's a huge sap for love stories. <laughs> oh, and don't let my garden die while I'm gone. He says I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Kostya and Vasha in charge of it. Just so okay, thank God. <laughs> thank fuck God. anything up. <laughs> Yeah, good, good Basha call. just gives you a thumbs up. I've decided to take a supervisory <laughs> role. <laughs> um, uh, and you all 
head out. Uh, you head south uh, down the same road the, that you took to get here. Uh, it is not a particularly long walk. Uh, the day is uh, cool and bright. There was a little more snowfall that came overnight, like maybe an inch and a half on the ground accumulated total. Uh, it's still very, uh, it's still a nice day as winter days go. Uh, you know, clear, uh, sunshine streaming down, uh, but nice and brisk. As soon as they're like away, far enough away from the uh, the house, Ember's gonna pull everybody into like a group meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you just get outside the uh, the the palisade surrounding the Tremaine estate. So he like he calls everybody. He's like, we need to we need to have a conversation real quick here about uh about what we're about to face. Sounds like he, okay. He looks uh -huh. around at the group. He goes, I may have been slightly more cavalier about what's going to happen. I don't and... know what that means, but continue. <laughs> cavalier means, and I explain it in Elvish. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't want to worry my husband. He's very, you've noticed, he's a very worried type of person. Um, <laughs> but this thing is for real. And uh, here's the important part. We cannot die. If you die, you're not coming back. No matter what. Salvador shifts. He's like, well, uh, actually. Actually what? Ember turns his, like, steely blue eyes on him. <laughs> so I was like, don't say, don't say I'm gay. Don't say I'm gay. Um... <laughs> Uh, he says, well, here's the thing. Uh, last night before bed, uh, Escher actually had a little talk with me. And he, he did what? He gave me some stuff. Oh, God, I'm going to kill that twink. <laughs> <laughs> he says, no, it's Which good one? things. Good things. Good things. Uh, he pulls out this uh, the brown this brown sack that uh, Escher gave him, and he pulls it open, revealing uh, three fist-sized diamonds inside, as well as a spell scroll. He says, he gave me these, just in case something happens. Uh, the diamonds... Ember are for the spell Revivify, of course. Uh, and the spell, and he looks really nervous, he says, the spell is a scroll of wish. All the, like, minimal color drains out of Selwyn's face at the mention of wish. <laughs> uh, Ember, so, Ember looks... Yeah, so Selwyn, I'm not going to make you roll for it. Ariasis and Nyla, I would like you to roll Arcana to see what you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask, I was like, would Ariasis... Ariasis might theoretically not know. Selwyn definitely knows what wish is. Especially because I just saw it in Mordenkainen's book, too. Yeah, that too. Wish is the spell of spells. Ooh, oh! Okay. <laughs> That's Nyla a solid five. Yeah, I only have a plus one, so <laughs> we're like... Oh! Oh. <laughs> you Okay, Amber, uh, Nyla, and Ariazis, you don't know what the why the fuck they like, are reacting like this. Like, like what the looking hell is around, like, the, I, I don't understand. Do you, do you know what wish is, Nyla? I don't. I don't know. Some sort of weird magic thing. Okay. Ember, uh, all the color is drained out of his face, and he, like, leans forward, and he goes, How the fuck did he... <laughs> he says, I don't know either! He said he made it, which is kind of a distressing answer. Are you... How powerful are y'all? Um, Woods, that's a conversation... That's a very long story, um, but... We are gonna have a very serious conversation when we get home. <laughs> More than um, kind of said that you save the universe? What? <laughs> like, it was gonna... <laughs> You say the universe? That, he like, looks up at Ember. That that's technically true. It was like it was a rough year. It was a couple of years. Um, look, I don't want. We don't want to like talk about it. It was very traumatic. There was a lot of trauma. Uh, so, and to be clear, Ember, the um, generally speaking, yes, if a night walker kills you, you are not coming back. The one yeah. big exception is unless you have wish. Ember Ember looks at uh, Sal and he goes. Look, I know from personal experience what using one of those is like. It's like, how many of you have cast Wish? What the <laughs> hell is this <laughs> Can you tell us what is it like? I don't know. What does it do? Um, it's not great. Let's just let's put it that way. It's It will knock you out. And when I mean knock you out, I'm talking about you will be useless for days. It takes everything, everything out of you. And and it's not to be played around with. He says, oh, I know. I don't, 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 get, don't get it twisted. I'm not going to use them unless I absolutely have to, but... I, know. I just so, want you to know the cost, because I know Esh I know Escher, and I just know that he's not great, and he he's great. I mean, I love Escher. Escher's the he's the love of my life, but also sometimes he's just a bit sociopathic. It's, <laughs> I think it's the former vampire thing. <laughs> <laughs> not not incorrect. Not incorrect. <laughs> Selwyn's Selwyn's hamster wheels are turning in her head, and she's like, "What did you cast it for?" 
my the wish spell that I that I did. Yeah. Um. Well, it's as it happened. One plane of existence happened to be colliding with our plane of existence, and it was going to uh, let's just say there were about to be no more planes of existence. What? How did we not notice that? <laughs> what? Well, I probably because I used the wish spell is what I would say. <laughs> Morden oh. Kaiden says he used it in the nick of time just before Sigil came crashing into the Prime Material Plane. And he says, mm. and he, he adds, to mostly to Sal, since he's the one who has the scroll, at great personal cost. He's not wrong. Great. Wish is a very powerful spell. And Sal's like, want, okay. You need to know that before you use it, because... <laughs> he says, I, I know it was powerful, and I know it can theoretically backfire, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely keep this in mind and won't use it unless I... Unless I absolutely have to. I'm gonna kill that son of a bitch when I get back home. Okay, that's... <laughs> it's fine. He, he, closes, he closes the bag again, uh, nervously, and, like, stuffs it back. Uh, stuffs it back Still, away. Still, I think that my point, the original point holds. Nightwalkers are very, very dangerous, and we need to do everything we can to ensure that, that no one has to use that spell, that everyone stays alive. So whatever prep you have to do, whatever preparations you have to do, this thing... This is the real deal. Make sure that we are on point. Okay, so what do we know about it? When you know what what do we know anything about what its strengths are or what, you know, it's weak to? Like how 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 do we do that? I imagine at this point like this conversation is happening as you continue walking. Yeah, walking. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um uh, Yeah, go ahead. Tell us uh, I cuz I sent you the I sent you the the stat you did. block. So. I actually pulled it right now. Yeah. yeah. Um I mean, it's resistant to just about everything. It is. <laughs> like, oh, it is that's... resistant to mm. non magical attacks. It is resistant to basically, I mean, it, it, just everything you can think of, it's resistant to. Uh... Um, Sal, I, there's no way I can, like, express this without talking, like, in D&D mechanics terms, but uh, Sal has an ability called um, Enhance Ability, and I yeah. think he might use this on ember so the main thing is this is a creature of the dead and it is immune to it is immune to i don't know how to say this not in D D. it's immune to necrotic <laughs> and poison so don't use that yeah well let's, let's you, you can abandon the pretense of talking you know okay, like in yeah. character like, you, this is the, this is the time where you want to strategize as you're walking okay yeah so right. wait i'm just gonna read this so, uh, it's 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 immune to most conditions. So, like, Great. don't try to like blind it or anything like that because it's not gonna do okay, anything. Good. Actually, blind is actually, one of the. Actually, never mind. Blind oh. is not on there, so actually, yeah. you can try to blind it. Yeah, blind. cool. Good. But everything but else, to, yeah. Don't it, try to frighten it or anything. Else. Yeah. Condition um, immune to exhaustion, frightened, grapple, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, and restrained. Yes. Right. Um, it's resistant to acid, cold, fire, lightning, thunder, and then. Bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical, so everything's going to have to be magical. Uh, if you start your turn within 30 feet of it, you're going to be taking a regular amount of damage. So if you're squishy, you should probably stay at least 30 feet away from it. Uh, so yeah, any other strategy you want to talk? You're going to have the opportunity to have a long rest. Uh, there's, it's like a it's like a two-day journey uh, to where Mordenkind okay. is taking you. So you'll have the opportunity if you want to prepare different spells, for example. Yeah, that's what I was, I was like, prepare, because that's something that I need to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Ember's gonna be pulling out the big guns for yeah, of course, spells. I would actually expect nothing. Gonna less. use some spells. Oh, are you actually <gasps> gonna use some stuff that we're, we haven't seen before? <gasps> use some spells. I actually, this what? one you have seen before. Who no, are you, and what have you done with Ember? <laughs> Ember, Ember's gained some wisdom. <laughs> oh boy. Ooh. <laughs> uh, not mechanically speaking, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> just the general sense. Just right. general, general, not. He's just, look, he doesn't want to piss off his, his husband. His husband's yeah. terrifying. Is this thing just guarding the entrance, or...? Uh, yes, Mordenkainen will tell you. Um, the Nightwalker was designed to, or was put there, was put in place uh, to guard the Demiplanes of Dread. Okay. So in theory, we could also just create an opening and maybe try to sneak past it. I mean, you can certainly try. <laughs> It's like twelve feet tall. Yeah. Right. <laughs> when I say sneak, I mostly mean Ember distracts it, and then everyone runs in, and then Ember just leaves <laughs> to fight the Nightwalker alone. That sounds like a terrible plan. 
Okay, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're good, or at least I'm good about some of this. I'm just gonna, oh god. I'm gonna try yeah. to cast a concentration spell and just hopefully I don't lose my concentration. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at like my list. I'm like, what can whoa, what can I prepare? What can I turn into? Huh? Yeah, we have, everybody good. has magical weapons and things like that, right? Because remember, if it's not magical, no. Sal does not have even have a weapon. Weapon. <laughs> okay, well, yes, but you got magic. Yeah. Yes, I, I do have magic, but I don't have any magical weapons. Yeah. Let's see. That's those are pretty much the only uh, spells that are particularly useful like he also has beacon of hope which gives advantage on death saving throws but it you're not going to be making a death saving throw in this fight like no matter what yeah (laughs) i should be immune to being frightened charmed yeah oh hey this is a fun one fiends have disadvantage on attack rolls oh yes it's not a fiend it's undead undead same thing (laughs) I love being a paladin. They're so OP. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, they're OP specifically against like three types of creatures. Yeah. <laughs> Every other creature, they're just sort of normal. But if you get them against a fiend or an undead, like watch out, yeah. bitch. Yeah. Coming nice. for your wig. And I imagine like all this tactical discussion is happening. Like you're, you made set up camp on the long road. Um, mm-hmm. You're about halfway there. Uh, yeah. And you're all... Uh, you know, just, you know, your Selwyn's flipping through her spell book. Salvador is probably praying to Elbath because you know, that's how, that's how they, that's how clerics prepare spells. So they pray. Mm-hmm. And you're all just psychologically preparing yourselves. Is there anything, <laughs> any RP that you want to do here? Ever pulls a uh, Sal aside. It sounds like interrupted from his prayers. Like, oh, oh what? <laughs> Look, I don't know what my husband said to you. He probably won't actually kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Sal Probably. looks really, really nervous. He's like, "Listen, I, it's nice to hear you say that, but just all the all the same, I'm gonna try real hard to make sure that you're healed and everything, and that nothing happens to you." No, no, I hear that. I just wanted to let you know. I don't want to risk his wrath. He's very scary. He is very scary. Yes, that's true. <laughs> it's one of the things I love most about him. But <laughs> Sal is like combination, like terrified and aroused, like, oh. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm just saying, if I do die, you should move. <laughs> you should move to a different plane of existence. Right. <laughs> yes. I'm just trying, I just I just wanted to let you know, just move somewhere else, okay? Sal looks so nervous, like, okay. <laughs> Ember gives him, like, a really hearty pat on the back, and he's like, good talk. He thinks this was a good talk, and he walks away. Sal's so like, ah! <laughs> I imagine that um, to keep their mind off, you know, all the shit, uh, Mordenkainen and Selwyn are commiserating about magic stuff again. <laughs> yes. That is true. Uh, they were doing that all last night, Ariazis. All of last night, right. It's like uh, Locked up in some dark sitting room by candlelight, copying out of books. <laughs> also, Selwyn is definitely not a lesbian. <laughs> Definitely by it's canon. Right? So you, I can I can imagine that like Ariazi's like walking around the camp like muttering to herself like yeah oh, you have such cool spells Mister Mordenkainen oh I want to copy them Mordenkainen oh no my robe has slipped off Mordenkainen. <laughs> <laughs> And she then, reads a lot of like I, I imagine like a lot of like trashy I don't I don't know if elves have trashy romance novels. Sure, let's say they do. We definitely do, and I've probably been giving you a bunch of them too. <laughs> right. And, oh, Katara's gonna be really mad about that. But anyway, that's yeah. not <laughs> that's neither here nor there. So like, Nyla Nyla yeah. definitely hears you say that and she like looks up and she goes, You sure you don't wanna have a, a private conversation with Selwyn before we put to face our potential doom? I I don't know. I feel like they're busy, you know, with Mordenkainen, again. Oh, I don't know. They always seem like they can make time for you. So, like, I imagine this is this conversation is happening right after Ember pulled Sal aside. And so Sal yeah. wanders back over to the fire looking so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and he, like, sits down. He's, like, smoothing out his robes, like... Mm-hmm. Ariazis is like, you know, it's fine. I am totally fine. And then, like, the, the moss on her head, like, bursts into flame. <laughs> Like, like, I'm ah! totally not angry or upset or anything. Why are you looking at me like that? Why is your head on fire? I... That grabs Selwyn's attention. What? What's going on? Ah, his head is on fire! 
<laughs> she like puts it out and it like curls up and it turns black and falls off and she's like what yeah You've like salvador not. was halfway through casting create water to put you out <laughs> <laughs> no no it's okay don't it's fine i don't need that nyla ran off to get water and she comes back and throws it on your head after you're already out <laughs> <laughs> so now she's just wet like um okay thank you're you you're on fire <laughs> it's gone it i'm also a tiefling so it doesn't it doesn't hurt me as much as it hurts you but okay oh. well <laughs> fire Morning. is very Concerned. Morgan Kynan and Selwyn are sitting on the other side of the fire, staring at all this ridiculousness. Like, what the hell? And Morgan Kynan looks at you, Selwyn, and is like, is this a normal thing for you? Uh, mm, kinda? <laughs> I guess? That's unfortunate. Salvador uh, pats your knee, Ariasi, and he's like, they're just, you know, bonded as wizards, because, you know, I guess Morgan Kynan's some kind of big shot wizard or something. Yeah, I guess. Who cares, anyway, about him? Not I mean, I guess Sylvain does. I mean, she's obviously some kind of fangirl for him or whatever. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess he's like really cool with the spells and whatever. Whatever. It's not a We've totally gone back to our spell discussion. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, not to alarm you guys, but uh, sometimes if I get very emotional, the moss does things. Why are you emotional, Ariazis? He's trying to keep a straight face. Like, <laughs> no, I... Don't let anything on. I'm not on fire, so, you know, clearly I'm not emotional, so it's fine. But your head was just... It rethink. was. Yeah, so why was it, though? Why was oh, that? Oh, you know, no reason. Just, it's just annoying, that's all. It's fine, I'm fine now. Is it because you like Selwyn? <laughs> Sorry, Ozzy, <laughs> just like... tact. <laughs> I know, right, tact. Like, she just, like, looks at you like, what? Salvador stares at you for a moment in silence, Ariazzi, and then he's like... Wow, you're kind of stupid, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and now she turns to him and she's just like, "What are you talking about?" Like, I mean, you're like you're you're obviously a very competent druid, and it's really cool when you turn into animals and stuff. But you're just kind of a big old idiot. Which I say I with what I which I say with affection. You know, there's nothing wrong with being stupid. I'm just saying. <laughs> She's like <laughs> looking between the two of you, like, I what what. What do you mean? <laughs> Nyla's just cackling on the floor like she's curled up into a ball. <laughs> what What is wrong with her? What I don't understand. Yeah, I think that's pretty clear that you don't understand. <laughs> I mean, like, to answer your question, yes, I like, I like Selwyn, I like Sal. I'm not really sure I like Nyla right now. <laughs> Everybody likes me. I, mm. I like you, Nyla. Mm -hmm. See, Sal likes me. <laughs> well for now until you do something that makes him angry again but you know okay okay it's not time for that right now <laughs> <laughs> all right um so let's get let's get to the meat of the episode yeah. shall we oh my god let's oh god. do it i'm sure you're all i'm sure the anticipation has been just killing you oh I god really oh god do i really don't want to do it <laughs> I know, i'm just like looking through my list of spells like fuck 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 <laughs> the place that mordenkainen ends up taking you to uh, is a forest. You actually passed it on the way here. You come to the edge of it. It's it's not far from the uh, the 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 long road between Neverwinter and Waterdeep. Uh, and he says, "This is the the misty forest." He says, and he's, "The forest itself has some dangers, but I guarantee you, there's nothing more dangerous in this forest than the Nightwalker." Uh, he turns to the party one last time and he says, "Remember, when you get into the Shadowfell, don't go into the fortress. Don't go in." And Salvador's like, yeah, ancient dark powers. Got it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> no. The way you're saying that, is it going to try to tempt us into it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Obviously. <laughs> he says, well, let's just say there's a reason that I was trapped in Barovia for 20 years. Oh. Okay. It, uh, he says, again, and look for a city called Evernight. But again, be very careful. When you are in Evernight, you will be strangers in a strange land. And also try not to let the, the the hollow bitterness eat away at you too much. Ember uh, looks around at everybody and he gives them all like a charming smile and he goes, Fear not, little ones, Lathander is on our side. And he pulls out the sun sword. Oh no, another one. I don't believe in Lathander. I mean, like, not that way. You don't have to believe in Lathander. Lathander believes in you. <laughs> I'm. Sounds so... like that sure is nice of him, I guess. 
Uh, so Mordenkainen uh, leads you into the misty forest, and true to its name, uh, there is a low fog that is snarled around every tree, every every shrub. Uh, you can hear owls hooting. Uh, you can hear the sound of wildlife running through the underbrush every now and then. Uh, and he takes you deeper and deeper into the forest. Uh, it gets later. Um, it's like it shouldn't be as dark as it is. Like you feel like it is a little unnaturally dark. Like you left. You got to the edge of the forest in like mid afternoon, uh, and it should be well before sundown, but it feels like it's nighttime uh, by the time Morton kind of finally raises one hand uh, and gestures for you to stop. And he says, Do you see it? And I would like all of you to make perception checks. That's Ember. <laughs> That's a nat one from Ember. That's to be expected. Yep. <laughs> That's a nat That's 20 seven. for himself. 14 from Nyla. <laughs> the first one who sees it uh, is. Um, a Salvador, he's like, oh my god. Uh, and it takes you a minute, Nyla, but then eventually you see it too. Uh, there is the tableau of the the trees in the mist uh, stretched out in front of you. All you can see of the trees is uh, their shadow because of the way the light is cast. And you realize that one of the trees is slowly swaying back and forth. Oh god. I, uh, like, I think Nyla, like, sidles over to Ariasis and is like, don't look now, but one of those trees is evil. <laughs> Sal, like, ducks next to you, Selwyn, and he, like, points it out in your vision for you. And then you can see it, too. You can see what you thought was a tree is slowly swaying back and forth against this backdrop of mist and shadow. How do we attack something that big? I find the best way to do things like this is just charge in. No! That probably just... doesn't sound... That sounds like the opposite of a good plan, but okay. No, you... You just hit things with your sword. It's fine. I don't have a sword, but all right. It works out very well for me. He pulls out his sword. <laughs> and Morden kind of says, remember, keep your distance. And Salvador, I expect you to be healing anyone who gets even a little bit hurt. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, got it, got it, got it. Uh, so he he's going to cast um, uh, Enhance Ability on you, Ember. Okay, two plus two is four. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Uh, you have four extra hit points, but he is also going to cast aid. Um, uh, so all of you get ten extra hit points, including Sal. Okay, cool. And I'm also going to cast uh, False Life on myself to give myself a little bit extra, too. Okay. And uh, finally, Ember is going to cast uh, Aura of Life on himself. Um, how do you want to... Uh, uh, like, you can try to sneak up on it, Ember, but you have, like... Eight Ember's layers. Not try to you have Ember's... eight layers of disadvantage on um, anything right. related to stealth. <laughs> it's like I'm wearing a giant. I'm wielding a giant light sword, and <laughs> no. Uh, oh yeah, Ember's gonna. Do you want to give us a go. cool little description of the sun sword for the for the yes, audience at absolutely. home? Absolutely. Uh, for, for, think... for the for the people at home, uh, the the previous campaign started with the curse of Strahd, uh, and one of the artifacts that you get uh, for the curse of Strahd is called the sun sword. Uh, we call it the holy lightsaber because uh, it's pretty much exactly <laughs> what it is. Yeah, so he pulls out the holy lightsaber, and it's just the hilt, and then he, like, activates it, and you can see, like, the blade fill in, <laughs> the humming noise. Zelda's like, whoa, neat, I'm gay, <laughs> damn it, stop it! <laughs> as, uh, as he pulled the sun sword, he goes, but Thander, give us aid in this time of, uh, in time of need, as we save the world, and he, ch- he just runs in. Oh, God. Right. oh, no, that one needs to be watched. <laughs> So, you run in, you get a surprise round, uh, but you do not get advantage on the surprise round because it's not a sneak attack or anything. Uh, so let's all roll initiative. Yep, that's what I figured. Okay, so, running towards... Let's get this party started! <laughs> yeah, right. Running towards the Nightwalker with his sword up, just shouting, In the name of Lavender! Very loudly. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> so I was like, he's kind of extra, but I like him. I like his style. <laughs> Ariaz oh, yeah, is just like so, face, like face palm like ugh. Ember is gonna cast Divine Smite at a fourth level. A thirty a thirty four rolled a hit. Yep. A, th- a thirty four. Is a thirty four hit? I, I I forgot how fucking OP the original <laughs> crew was. Yep, yeah, me I mean his armor class is fourteen. Yeah, thirty four hits an AC fourteen. <laughs> Great, good to hear it. Uh, okay, so wait, we're gonna do some more math. Oh my god! Jesus fucking oh my Christ. god! <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I can't do this very. But this is this is like the first. This is the first and only time you're gonna see this. Right. 
<laughs> but still, good chunk. That's great. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. So Wayne's just kind of like, okay, I know he's married, but like that was hot. <laughs> yeah, Salvador's the back like, I am gay! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, now he's attractive, I see. <laughs> Um, okay, so that was the surprise round. Uh, it is Salvador's turn. Uh, there's Who's gay. Who is <laughs> extremely gay. He cannot, you cannot even comprehend how gay he is right now. Um, he is not going to burn any of his spell slots because he, he, he is needed in case someone is hurt. Healing, yeah. Yeah, uh, so he's going to just cast Sacred Flame, I think. Oh! oh. That one is not going to do it. Whoa. I wish he'd roll that for a more powerful spell <laughs> wow good job Sal holy shit that's that's a two whole damage good job Sal wow <laughs> an attempt was made an attempt was made <laughs> we, that we need that shitty gold star gift again he's, he's a little too gay and a little distracted right, he's distracted. intimidated exactly. he got distracted by how gay he was so Wayne uh, you are up in the initiative order my darling Okie dokie, okie dokie, okie dokie. I'm gonna cast Cloud of Daggers as a third level spell. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, spell focus to make it a uh, critical. Ooh, look at you. How many ones? I mean, That's in fairness, there are only four options on a D4. Yeah. I right. know, but like, yeesh. Look at how, there's a lot of threes. There yeah, are a lot of threes. threes. There are mm -hmm. a lot of threes. It isn't the Nightwalker's and... turn. Uh oh. Fuck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Cool. Uh, so he got a surprise round in on him, uh, and the moment Ember comes charging forward, uh, this this massive creature turns around. Its eyes are blazing, unearthly, like lich fire blue. Uh, and when it moves, uh, its entire body groans like wood caught in wind. Uh, and he is going to activate an annihilating aura. Uh, so Ember, I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Nineteen okay. plus three—that's more than enough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh so you will you do not take any damage from the annihilating aura this round. And now that it has activated that, it is going to hit you with enervating focus. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yep, that yep. hits. Yeah. Hit. <laughs> I would say, yeah. That's make good. a make a con save. Yay. Uh that is good. Uh so you take twenty-eight necrotic damage, uh, okay. but that is not subtracted from your health pool total. Okay. <laughs> And then it is going to use a finger of doom on oh, you. No. <laughs> it extends its long branch-like arm and points it down at you. Uh, make a wisdom save, Ember. Okay. Oh. <laughs> that is not good enough. Uh, you take 26 necrotic damage. Okay. And you are frightened until the end of the Nightwalker's next turn. Wait, I don't think I can be frightened. Oh, that's right. That's right. You are immune to the frightened condition. Yes. <sighs> uh, and it is going to, when it sees, when it, like, so it casts this spell and it knows it should have worked, but for some reason uh, you are not affected and it gets very angry. So it is going to, well, first it's going to use its action to move out of the cloud of daggers. Uh, so okay. it doesn't have to take any more slashing damage. Uh, that cool. is the Nightwalker's turn. Nyla, you're up. Okay. Uh <laughs> Nyla's like looking at this thing and is like, oh god, and uh, I'm gonna have to get close enough to... Oh no. If I want to do any damage on it, I have to get close enough to use my magical weapon, because I don't have anything that's long range and magical. So can <laughs> I go in within 60 feet of it, throw it, and then get back out of it again? Uh, yeah, you can. Okay, uh, if you get, Although you'd have to get within 20 feet to do, uh, to have not disadvantage okay. on the, on the okay. attack roll. Okay, can I get back out again to do that? What is my... Yeah, you could theoretically, like you could... Your your total movement speed is, I believe, 30 feet? Yeah. So you could, like, move, you know, 10 feet in and then do an attack and then move 10 feet out. Okay. I am gonna go, so she's gonna go in there, like, steal herself up <laughs> and then... <laughs> and puts her the hood of her cloak up and then goes in. Uh, a 20 is a hit. A dirty 20 uh, for the audience. Don't Wait. get excited. Um, <laughs> uh, roll damage. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Look at that shit! A two, a <laughs> one, a one, a one. Oh, fuck that! <laughs> I mean, d in damage is damage, so... Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, so she goes in, she throws it, and then she's gonna recall it. That's just another... another... Yeah. Minus six, okay. And then she's gonna try to hide. <laughs> Alright, uh, roll stealth. Yeah, I mean, it's passive perception is nine, so yeah. A okay. dirty <laughs> <laughs> Where'd she go? Next up in the order is Mordenkainen. 
Uh, Mordenkainen does not have a lot of spells that deal damage that it's not resistant to. Mm. Um, so he is going to do what a glass cannon do, and he is going to cast Time Stop. Yay. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> He's going to cast Time Stop. Uh, let me just refresh my memory. <laughs> if one of the actions you use during this period or any effects that you create during this period affects a creature other than you or an object being worn or carried by someone other than you. No, that's fine. So he's got other spells that he can uh, cast during this time. Okay, no, I see you're coming from Pig. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know. That's hard to think about. Uh, so he casts Time Stop, uh, which none of you perceive because time has stopped for you. Uh, so the- <laughs> right. So the first thing he is, the first turn he is going to cast, he's going to cast Globe of Invulnerability. An immobile, faintly shimmering barrier springs into existence in a 10 foot radius around you. Uh, so he's going to get up next to you, Ember, so you also benefit uh, from from this, uh, uh, this spell effect. Uh, any spell of 5th level or lower cast outside the barrier can't affect creatures or objects within it, even if the spell cast is used at a higher level spell slot. Uh, such spells can target creatures and objects within the barrier, uh, but the spell has no effect on them. Uh, similarly, the area within the barrier is excluded from area of effect spells. Uh, so the you, are, you and Mordenkainen are no longer affected by the Annihilating Aura for as long as Globe of Invulnerability. Uh, oh. is in effect. Sweet. Nice. Ooh, that's a good spell for him to cast uh, around the squishies. Uh, he is also going to cast a wall of force uh, around uh, the the folks in the back. Uh, around Selwain, around, um, around... Well, Nyla is kind of doing her own thing. He can't, <laughs> he can't affect Nyla <laughs> with the spell. <laughs> Uh, an invisible wall of force springs into existence at a point you choose within range. The wall appears in any orientation you choose, so in kind of like a big uh, semi-sphere, semicircle uh, in front of Selwain, Salvador, and Ariazes. Okay. Uh, so a little extra, a little extra mojo uh, for you guys. He's just <laughs> going to use his last turn to cast um, Lightning Bolt, even though it is going to be resistant to it. He is going to cast it at an eighth level, though. All right, so the night walk, or the night walker takes twenty-two lightning damage. So, like, so just to to like to put it in perspective of what you guys are experiencing, um, <laughs> and like, Borden kind of makes a gesture with his hand, and suddenly he's behind Ember, and they're both inside this shimmering globe. You guys are behind this faintly shimmering wall of force directly in front of you, and also the night walker is taking twenty-two lightning damage to the face. <laughs> We're all like, "What? <laughs> what just happened?" Like, I, so, I would like to think Ember does not. He's just like he's just like, oh hi, Morton Ken. <laughs> hey, what's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Going pretty well so far. <laughs> that, that that was a thing, okay. Uh, so that was Morton Kynan's turn. Uh, next up in the order is Ember. Ember is going to like give Morton Kynan a like nod, and uh... <laughs> Salvador's like, what, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Magic shit. I don't know. Well, then Ember's gonna do what Ember always does. <laughs> smash? <laughs> Ember's just... gonna smash. He's good at smashing, in fairness. <laughs> and he's also good He's also good at calling out to his god and saying, Imbue my sword with holy light! <laughs> and more! <laughs> more holy light! And he's gonna cast Divine Smite again. <laughs> more holy light, please! <laughs> Additional holy light, okay. So... He has a 39 hits, you unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thanks, Ember. So that's the, the 74 damage is the first attack. Yeah, of course it is. Wow. Okay, but this one's going to be less, so. All right. Ember takes a big old chunk out of this this bad boy. Uh, yeah. It is, uh, the, the movements it is making, you can see, like, splinters of holy light going up uh, underneath its tough, sort of bark-like skin. Uh, and it is... Ariazi's turn. She just saw like everybody do all this like really cool OP shit and she's like, oh, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna cast Moonbeam because it's everything else. It's not what? magical. Is damage, that a so. deck save or con? No, it's con it save, right? It is a con. Yeah, con save. A dirty 20 is probably a save, but it does take half damage. Okay. Okay. Um, we are back into the top of the order with Salvador. Uh, he is going to try to heal you because he is very, very scared of Escher, uh, <laughs> Ember. <laughs> right. Uh, he is going to cast Cure Wounds at a third level. That's you know, not nothing. 
That's not nothing. Yeah, that's so you good. get 28 hit points back. Sylwain, you are back. You are up next. Oh, Ember, Ember gives uh, Sal a big smile and thumbs up and is like, thanks, little buddy. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm gay. I'm Damn gay. it. Yeah. <laughs> I will do magic missile as my third level. Pew, 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 pew. So that should be, if I'm doing the math right, 6d4 plus 1. 22. All right. It is now the Nightwalker's turn. Oh, it has decided that it does not like this big, bright, shiny paladin. Yeah, probably. Uh, I would like you to make a dex save, Ember. No! Oh, boy! <laughs> well, fuck me. Ember is really great at those. He's great at dex saves. <laughs> so I'm gonna Makes a, like, best. no, he's not gesture at the non-existent audience. To, to our listeners, uh, uh, in the last campaign, he, uh, basic, he a dragon bit his leg off, and Escher had to reattach it. Uh, and the 15 is not good enough. And now he has permanent disadvantage on anything related to dexterity. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Ember, uh, you go Whoa. flying 50 feet and you hit a tree ah! for 37 points of damage. You are now out of the Globe of Invulnerability, and the Nightwalker is going to uh, cast Finger of Doom on Mordenkainen. And this does not, this passes through the Globe of Invulnerability because it is not a spell, it is just a magical ability that it has. So Mordenkainen oh, oh. needs to make a wisdom save. A 17 is not good enough. Oh no. Oh. Mordenkainen is going to take Our big hitters. Our twin is going to take 26 necrotic damage. He's he's okay. He's okay for now. For now. <laughs> I don't it's fine. It's I don't, fine. It's fine. I don't like that tone of voice at all. <laughs> I know right. And then the Nightwalker is also going to attack uh Mordenkainen. So he needs to make a con saving throw. Is it 30 hit? Is it 30 hit? <laughs> what does new hit score mean? So a 16 is not good enough. So Morden kind of has taken another 28 points of damage. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and, yep. Morden kind of is not looking great. It's not looking great. That was a lot of his hit points. He only had 99 hit points because he's a wizard. He's kind of squishy. Uh, and that was the Nightwalker's turn. Nyla, you're up next. Oh, boy. Nyla stares around at all this carnage and is like, dear God in heaven, what did I get myself into? <laughs> oh, God. Um, okay, well, she's still gonna try to... Oh. <laughs> she's gonna, like, step forward and say, but well, no, there's nothing she could do. Shit, okay, she's just gonna attack it. That's all she's gonna do. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's gonna come in and try to throw another dagger and then stay out of its out of its area. <laughs> <laughs> oh, neither of those probably hits because it's a five, so ten and a nine. Nope. Nope, neither of those hit. Okay. <laughs> so she's just like so scared of all this, so she throws them and she's like, ah! Uh, <laughs> uh, but you can recall it to your hand with that penalty. Yes, yeah, so she recalls it and then she's going to try to hide again. Uh, actually, no, it's a bonus action. You cannot hide. I forgot about that last time, too. Oh, fuck. You've already used your bonus action. Oh, but recalling you... it. Oh, I forgot yeah. about that. Shit, recalling okay. it is a bonus action, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that was Nyla's turn. Uh, it is Mordenkainen's turn now, who is like, Fuck that hurt! So as he is, you know, picking himself back up, you know, trying to put his blood back in his body, <laughs> um, the you notice that the air around the Nightwalker is starting to sort of shudder uh, and, and ripple unnaturally, uh, and you hadn't noticed it at first glance because you know you were you were a little busy with you know the the twelve foot tall undead monstrosity directly in front of your faces, yeah. uh, but he is standing at the uh, at the mouth of a crypt like an underground crypt and the crypt is starting to get uh a little it's it's like it's getting difficult to look at like the way it is uh like reality is starting to warp around it oh. uh, as you continue to attack this night walker morden kind of like oh this is not good i wonder i don't know if this is going to work but i'm going to see if i can try it all right he is going to cast banishment oh uh, so he has oh. a spell save of 17, and he, the Nightwalker needs to make a charisma save. And his charisma mod is minus one. Uh, 13 is not good enough. Uh, so for the Nightwalker, suddenly, whoop, and it pops out of existence. It's just gone. Uh, no, it's not gone forever. Mordenkainen yeah. quickly turns around and he says, This spell is only going to last for a minute. Quickly, just, just hurry. Just get down to the crypt. Okay. Got it. Nyla looks at everybody and goes, it. okay, let's go. Run. It takes off at a sprint. 
Yeah. Yes. Salvador says, but what about Ember? He looks hurt. He's he'll be fine. Ember gets up. Or do I come help him? <laughs> Ember's like groaning. I mean, and to be clear, like, to be clear, we are still in initiative order because the spell lasts only, uh, yeah. only lasts a minute. Ember's it's like, I'm Ember. I'm really scared of your husband. I really don't want to let you die. I'm not gonna die. Mordenkainen's here. Mordenkainen <laughs> also is not looking great. He's not right, looking great. Exactly. We've got this. I've We've got, got this. <laughs> I can give them a potion of healing. I have lots of potions of healings. <laughs> And also, 2d4 plus 4 isn't going to do a lot for me. It's not going to do jack shit for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so we're on the on the train of just go, go, now, go. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so first, uh, we're, like I said, we're still in initiative order. Uh, so, Ember, it is your turn, uh, technically. Is there anything you want to do? Uh, um, get up. <laughs> yeah, you were prone, so that's a thing. And First you know, uh, you don't have to roll for this. You know that when banishment ends, the the, the night walker is going to reappear exactly where yes, it was. Yeah, because I've got yeah, I've got banishment. Um, yeah. What else? Do you want to really do anything else? It's not concentration. Um... Uh, you can uh, heal yourself if you've got cure wounds or something. Yeah. Did I prepare cure wounds? You oh. also have that paladin thing, don't you? Oh fuck yeah! I've got lay on hands that I never use. I lay <laughs> hands. I lay hands on myself. <laughs> Gross. Love it when you break when I that. think about you, I lay hands on myself. Whoa! <laughs> I touch myself. No, I'm. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, no, I'm gonna heal. I don't <laughs> remember what. Take. I don't remember. It's, some, it's no, like I, your paladin level times something. It I is. I've got like it's 85 hit points is what I've got available. <laughs> Okay, so you can heal yourself up to your yep. maximum. I can heal myself up to my max, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> he, like, gives big thumbs up, like, see, it's fine. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, Thanks, Offender. <laughs> uh, Ariazis, you're next up in the order. Are you going to, what are you going to do? Are you going to bolt for the crypt? Um, how's Mordenkine and looking? <laughs> Not great. Uh, he is still maintaining uh, banishment. It's a concentration spell, so he's got both his arms outstretched toward where the, um, where the night nightwalker used to be and he's like maintaining concentration on the spell okay. and also he's like bleeding from a lot of places probably should have mentioned that first right because i was like lot, thinking yeah. about casting cure wounds and i was like should i run uh, he um, wants it's clear that he wants you to just go straight into the crypt all right in that case then like okay and she's just gonna run for it okay uh Ariazis runs for the crypt uh you just make it to the top of the stairs past the uh that's how much you how much uh, distance you have in your turn. Uh, Salvador's up next. Uh, Salvador, he sees you heal yourself, Ember, which is like that's somewhat comforting to him. But also, he's like, it's like, oh, your husband is really scary. And I don't want to get on his bad side. Um, <laughs> but uh, reluctantly, he looks between Mordenkainen and Ember, and he's like, I can't just leave Ariazis. And then he runs after Ariazis. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's one, two, three. Okay, uh, Selwyn, you are next up in the order. Okie dokie. Um. Uh, running. Yeah, I, l I look really pained. I cast Expeditious Retreat on myself, and I run, and I can run twice as far. All right, you haul ass uh, <laughs> straight past Ariazis. And in fact, you get so fast, I'd like you to make a quick con save for me, Selwyn. Uh, okay, good. All right, uh, we'll deal with the effects of that in a minute. <laughs> okay, good. Um... So that is, it is, it would normally be the Nightwalker's turn, but the Nightwalker is presently out of initiative order. Uh, so that makes Nyla next up in the order. <laughs> Nyla's sprinting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah! And you can use your, as... you can use your cunning action to dash, right? Yes. Are you going to, or you don't have to if you don't yes. want to. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah. bye! Oh, legs. <laughs> yes. Nyla's like, as soon as, in fact, in fact, just because of the initiative order that she's coming last, as soon as somebody said run to the crypt, she was like, great, I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you say so. <laughs> uh, okay, so you have that bonus action for dash, so I would like you to make a con throw as well. Okay. That's also not good, because her con is also not good. Uh, and as you are, like, hauling ass past it, like, literally the second your feet uh, hit the stairs in the crypt leading down, you hear that familiar roar of the Nightwalker behind you. Uh, but you all make it down in time and just in time for the battle uh, to re to reengage. And you, I'm going to leave it ambiguous uh, as to what happens uh, after what happens to them. <laughs> I might I might have a chat with uh, Amber afterwards, and we might I don't know. We'll figure something out. Right. <laughs> I might we might have oh we could make it like a deleted scene. Uh, the last part of the last oh. leg of the fight with uh, with Mordenkainen and Ember and the Nightwalker. Yes. 
Okay, so that's what we'll do. Uh, you know, so, so join our Discord server bit.ly slash CFC Discord to find out what happens with them hey. and Morgan kind of. <laughs> hey. Um, you all make it to the bottom of this crypt. Or at least you think you do. You're running down the set of stairs and you just keep running and running and the stairs get lower and lower and it gets darker and darker and colder. Uh, and then, quite abruptly, you're not in a crypt anymore. Uh, quite abruptly, you are standing outside. The wind is howling and far above you, there's this this churning gray soup of an overcast above you. Uh, and taking up your entire field of vision is this massive gray stone wall. It's got to be 200 feet high and you can't even see how far it goes in either direction. There is a massive wrought iron gate in front of it. And with those con saves, that 15 and that 16, uh, you, uh, Nyla and you, Selwain, uh, are the first ones out and you find yourself stumbling slowly towards it, almost against your will. And now that they are uh, inside of it, Ariazes and Sel Salvador also need to make con saves behind them. Okay. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> wow, you all are really terrible at this, huh? Yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, so you are all. It's like it's almost like your legs are working against you. Uh, like you can see, like this is the fortress. This is the fortress that Mordenkainen said don't go into. We're not supposed to go in there. <laughs> Yeah, and you say that no! out loud. You say that out loud. It's like, you're not supposed to go in there, but you feel this inexorable pull. It's like gravity, like dragging you toward the entrance. Uh, and so you you stumble forward a few more times, and uh, Salvador is like, oh, why are we doing this? Guys, why are we doing this? I don't like it. I don't, we, gotta, we gotta stop. Can we, is it like our legs are like... Is it just like our legs are out of our control? Like it is. Trying to use our hands to like grab onto things. Or... It is very much like your legs are out of your control. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know. Think of something creative. Uh, what's um, around? Just the the gate. Yeah. There's nothing else. Just Not the gate really. And the wall. Uh, the, uh, f about fifty feet off in either direction, there are some like uh, the remnants of rocky landslides. Uh, this whole thing is built into something like a like a mountain pass. Uh -huh. uh, and you can see, like, there's piles of rock about 50 feet away. But that's pretty much it. The, the ground under your feet is dry and desiccated. Okay, anybody got any good spells? Come on! I could summon an animal? To drag us back? <laughs> okay, Yeah, sure. do it! Yeah! Um, so conjure animals. I can conjure up to eight beasts with challenge rating one-fourth. So I have to think about, like... I can do, yeah, one beast with a challenge rating two. So let's see, what's the biggest thing I can summon? <laughs> um, challenge rating two. Probably something with good strength would be helpful. Let's do that. She's going to summon a rhino. <laughs> All right. Um, a rhinoceros <laughs> suddenly <laughs> appears, I imagine, directly in front of you. Yeah. She's uh, like, I don't ah! have a pull. Uh, is there a, I need a stat block for a rhinoceros, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, words you never thought you would ever say. Right. You never, never thought that you would say that. But, oh, come on. Yeah. It's D&D. &D. You should have thought of that. <laughs> Page 336. It's in the monster manual. I got it. Uh, Yeah, it's got a plus five to strength. So it's going to make a strength check for all of you to stop you. Because which I imagine that's what Ariazis is screaming. Stop us. Stop us. Right, right. It's conjure animals. So like it'll listen to any commands. It's just like, oh, stop us from going forward. Please stop. Uh, so that's a strength contest. So actually, that would be. God damn it! Okay, Sal overpowers a rhinoceros. So... <laughs> <laughs> Ariazi just looks at him like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, ah! <laughs> um, "So I guess we're we're all doing this." <laughs> yes, you're all in contest with the twelve. Uh, so Selwyn, it stops me. <laughs> it stops you. It stops Selwyn. Oh, I yes! Also, I no, am good. not it's stronger than a rhino! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I have plus zero, so... Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as soon as the rhinoceros stops you in your tracks, Nyla and Selwain, the spell around you kind of shatters imperceptibly. Like, the moment you are physically able to stop, the magic it just kind of snaps. Uh, and you give up. It's, uh, but Salvador and Ariazzi's like, I imagine, like, Salvador, like, did a, like, a, like, a tuck and roll underneath its stomach, and Ariazzi's, like, kind of sideswept it or something. Um, okay, stop him! <laughs> yeah, seriously, I'm gonna, I guess, cast... Flying tackle, Ariazzi's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, that's <laughs> right, oh, you stupid! 
<laughs> That's exactly what I think. Actually, uh, let's see who looks more. No, Sal. Uh, Nyla's gonna go and try to tackle <laughs> Sal right around the legs. Okay, this is gonna be uh, your strength versus his acrobatics. dexterity. Acrobatics. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Acrobatics. You're like, please. I'd allow acrobatics, and this is gonna be him trying to maintain his stability, which is a con save. God damn it! <laughs> Whoops. God damn it! <laughs> oh God, Sal! So, so I'm imagining this as like Nyla like rolls herself up into like bowling ball style and just like totally misses gutter ball. <laughs> um, I'm gonna cast uh, I guess suggestion and just say to stop um, on Ariazis. So make a yeah, I have that as well. It's a wisdom save. I believe uh, druids hmm. have proficiency on um, wisdom saves. Yeah, I was like, that's bad for you. Okay, so save eh. is... Yeah. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> She's like, I want this okay. thing, but I can't but wait. Up. I wait. have movement too, so wait. I guess I'm... No, no, I have an idea. I have oh, been God. wanting to use this the entire time. Okay, do it. In my burglar's pack, I have ball bearings. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and I wanted to I've been trying to find a situation to use these since I got them. Uh no, okay, so Nyla uh pulls out her ball bearings and throws them in front of Salvador's feet, and Salvador has to make a dexterity saving throw, I guess, or please, fall on please his roll ass. Low. Please roll low. <laughs> oh my again. god! Oh, god oh, damn it! Ariazes, you also make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, good. God. Jesus. God. Christ, you guys! God. I don't want to roll well now. Oh okay, here's how this is going to go down. You all felt a compulsion to walk toward this ominous castle. And oh. despite a rhinoceros, despite <laughs> a flying tackle, despite a spell that was cast on Ariazes, despite a thousand ball bearings <laughs> underneath their feet, Ariazes and Salvador are still tromping forward uh, toward this door. And as they do, there's this dark energy that comes radiating out of it in this low hissing sound, like a thousand voices snarling out of the darkness. And let's leave it there for tonight. Motherfucker! Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey friends, it's your favorite DM, Tessa Crowley. Can't wait for the next episode? Good news, you can join our Discord server to download episodes in pre-release, weeks before anyone else, at bit.ly slash cfcdiscord. If you want more information on the show, character sheets, and social media links, head to our website, critfail.club or critfailclub.com. Full episodes are available on our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash cfcchannel, and wherever you get your podcasts. Which is not a lot of damage, but he's not the hey, giant or something. Oh, sorry about the dog. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> oh. hold on, give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> he's a loud boy. It's this is B-roll. gonna this is gonna be making it into the B roll.